ask you, Lord, to convey that message through my lips. Sanctify me. There be nothing that can hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit. We ask you for a demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you manifest yourself in the course of this message, I pray. Amen. In this video you're about to see, um, it was nighttime, probably like 10.30 at night, somewhere like that. And I heard something outside, so I opened this door like this, and I pointed it over here towards my mom and dad's house. And then when I zoom in, you can see there's the side door, and then you see this back porch area, and then right against the wall is a white refrigerator. So in the video that you're going to see where that white refrigerator is, some light being, ghost, I don't know what you want to call it, walks out from it. So watch close. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now we are in the midst of a supernatural war. This is a war between light and darkness. It's a war between good and evil. It's a war between Christ and Antichrist. This supernatural war is a fight to the finish. It's not until you get tired or you get weary. We're not doing this in our strength. We're doing it in God's strength. St. Paul gives this battle cry. Put on the whole armor of God. That is a command. It is not a request. It is for your benefit. You be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. He says you put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He says for our struggle it is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places.
Scheiße. <lacht> If demons manifesting as aliens are part of the end times, we should remember that they too are created beings, subject to a sovereign God, and ultimately answerable to Him. No matter what happens to us on the earth, we should trust that the Lord is the Savior, Redeemer, and Protector of the souls who put their trust in Him. Forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now, we have a Christ, a living Christ, who is a man now in glory. He has flesh, he has bone, he has hair, he has eyes. He's a living man because he has still got his manhood even though he is God. He's a man in glory. He is there and we are here, but his spirit is here. We are living through the spirit. I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Who lives in me? The spirit of Christ. There is a man, Antichrist. You see, there are two Christs in the world, Jesus Christ the Lord and Antichrist. Antichrist has a spirit. There is a spirit of Antichrist that is even now moving in the world, preparing for the coming of this man. Just as sure as you as a believer have the spirit of Christ in you, there are people today that are absolutely possessed of the spirit of Antichrist. Was it because of Adam's sin? You see, Adam, we, we know from the New Testament and the Old Testament, disobeyed and it brought uh, disobedience, brought death and death through that disobedience and yes. all die through him, but through the last Adam, Jesus Christ, all may be made alive. Well, here's the problem. Uh, if it's because of Adam's sin, you realize, of course, to them, we're the aliens. Adam was an alien. Jesus is an alien. So could you imagine sharing the gospel on one of these alien worlds, wouldn't it start off something like this a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away? Right. Doesn't make much sense, does it? No. The uh, book of Romans chapter 8 talks about the taint of sin over the entire creation. So they're living in a world with, with that taint of sin. So Romans 8, 18 through 25 would seem to include these alien worlds. So how could you have perfect unfallen creatures living in a world that's tainted uh, with the effects of Adam's sin. And that's, that's a real problem as well. Speaking of our uniqueness again, that, that's fascinating that it says all of creation was affected by our sins, like we're the main characters. That's it. Again, get yeah. back to the centrality. You know, right. maybe, maybe we're not geographically the center of the universe, but we certainly are the center of God's attention. And our effects are very large. You know, it's not just from those passages like Romans 8, but also uh, Second Peter. Uh, the book of Revelation and also some Old Testament passages talk about there being a new heaven and a new earth one That's day. Right. Right. And I think it's because both the earth and the heaven need to be redeemed from, uh, from the taint of man's sin. Thank you. 